Yo, what is cool and what is going on? We have the 12th man today. Hopefully we don't need Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Joby, I'm coming down. But we are going to be doing a mock draft and talking about the roster needs, post-free agency, everything they have done. Let's start off with the free agent signings. They got a couple of big signings out here. They retained their guys and they bring in some key players to help them out. LaVisca Chenault will help them in, in regards of special teams and also get him the ball in his hands on some screens and stuff like that. He's, you know, your gadget dude adding to the offense. Fourth, fifth receiving option. So I don't mind it as a veteran minimum type of deal. Noah Fant's back on a two-year deal. Well earned. He's a good tight end still with a lot of upside too. And they got Farrell Brown, good backup to have in here. So I think Ryan Grubb won't run as much heavy tight end personnel. He's probably going to run a lot more 11 personnel than I would say under Shane Waldron. So it's not as big of a priority having as many tight ends. But Farrell Brown's a nice backup to have. And then a George Fant, I love that they brought him back. George Fant's been really reliable. So I like this deal. Two years, just under $5 million a season. Yeah, I don't mind that at all, especially with Abraham Lucas's injury history. So that's something in question mark. Fant can come in here, be a reliable starter for them. And if you, you know, just depending on what happens with Abraham Lucas. Now you got yourself two tackles on that side. You feel confident. Plus, Fant can play on the pinch over to the left tackle position. No problem as well. Jermaine Archram coming inside to the interior. Going to compete in training camp. Not a lot of guarantees there. Nick Harris, love this signing. Really think this was a sneaky, one of my underrated signings in free agency was Nick Harris. I've watched him over at Cleveland, and I think he's ready to be a starter. So this is one where you compete with Ola, Ola Watimi, if nothing else, but I feel like they're going to find a good starter out of one of those guys. Defensively wise, the big cat, Leonard Williams, re-signed three years. It's a lot of money. He is a really good player, though, so I, I don't mind that you traded for him, so it made a lot of sense to retain him. Jonathan Hankins, nice early down run defender. It's something they struggle with tremendously. I do think Mike McDonald will get that corrected, which is the scheme change. Daryl Taylor comes back. I still believe in Daryl Taylor. Let's hope he can have a breakout year. It, you know, it's just about putting it there, man. He's got a lot of potential. Jerome Baker, nice signing here. $7 million one-year deal. It's not a long-term signing. Same thing with Terrell Dotson. Both guys that are, are capable starters. You're going to have to think about the future. But I like both of those signings. Nice help out, you know, I'm going to help out that linebacking core, which is really thin. Obviously, let, let me, there's a whole new room. Artie Burns, good depth. He was a really solid slot player for them last year. Could also play on the outside. Rashawn Jenkins comes over from the Jaguars, two-year deal as your box safety. I mean, you got Kayvon Wallace, who's kind of more of a box safety as well on a one-year deal. He'll compete in training camp. Not a lot of guarantees there. Nonetheless, I still think they're missing a free safety with Julian Love, who's also kind of like a hybrid, can play in the box, can line up in the slot, do things like that, and play deep safety. He was there best safety last year is really good let's go on to the roster needs portion of this though now and start off with the offense line this is my number one priority on the entire team it, you have to look at the offense line this is a red alert push the code red get the red shirt i don't know whatever you got to do we need interior offensive line now i think they're in a good position as i was saying earlier at center i'm not worried about that position nick harris olu olu watimi olu sagoon olu watimi one of those guys, to me, will be the starter. I'm really confident in Nick Harris. I think Olawatimi has plenty of upside there. It's finding the guard position. Anthony Bradford, year number two, we shall see. Okay, I'm not going to bank on that, but at the same time, I do think he's got a good chance to be a starter and has upside for sure. I'm going to add more competition there. Left guard is the number one priority on this team. Tackle-wise, you're in a good spot, Cross. He's getting close, man. I think year three, this could be the breakout year for him and, and start ascending towards more of an, a you know a topper-tier tackle, if that makes sense. But nonetheless, George Fan at right tackle, I have listed as a starter. Abraham Lucas could win that job, but no, either which way, you're going to have a good swing tackle. So overall, there are some improvements, and I think the tackle position's finally secured out a little bit. Scott Huff's still going to have his work put out for him. Ryan Grubb as the OC, Scott Huff as the offensive line coach, coming over, both coming over from Washington. Nonetheless, this will be my number one priority. Onto the wide receiving core, tight end room. This is much, you know, less of a priority. They could add another, maybe a speed thread in here to develop high Tyler Lockett. That's really the only thing that I would 
be looking at potentially maybe a third tight end because Farrell Brown is only on a one-year deal, Noah Fant on a two-year deal. So that's something they could look at. I was saying earlier, I don't think they're going to prioritize tight end as much, being more of an open 11 personnel type team. Let's go on to the running back room, which looks great. Zach Charbonnet is the backup. K9, this is a great room. You got Kenny McIntosh. Could they look at a fourth, fifth running back? Possibly. It's a late need, if any, slash UDFA type of pickup. Quarterback, they could look at a quarterback three. Don't be, I wouldn't be shocked if they took a quarterback higher than what I would do. However, it just depends on who's available. Like if Michael Penix falls to them in the third round, then that is a no-brainer. I would take Michael Penix Jr. to develop behind Geno Smith, Sam Howell, etc. But I do think Sam Howell can be a good developmental piece behind Geno Smith, and he has capability to 100% be the starter down the line. So I'm not going to invest a ton of resources in it right now. It could be a late-round pick. And then we go on to the defense side of the ball. Defensive line still could use some depth, right? The interior, Jaron Reed's a free agent after the season. So is Jonathan Hankins on a one-year deal. Cameron Young, we'll see if he's ready to go by year three. I mean, he's year two right now, but year three once these guys are free agents. Overall, Mike Morris, a young developing player on that interior. Draymond Jones could be cut after the season, just cap purposes wise. So that's something to keep an eye out on. They're paying a lot of these guys. So maybe you draft some more interior depth. Edge rusher, same thing. Daryl Taylor on a one-year deal. Maybe find somebody in the future mold there. If he's not, if you're if you don't ring sign him, Sasha Chin and Owosu, if he, you know, if, if there's more injury problems, then they could move on from him and save some money there, depending on how Derek Hall looks. So those are all some areas we could look at in the draft. Linebacker wise. This is a future need. This is more of a priority for me. This is something, not a first round priority, but it's with their third round pick or at least at minimum their fourth round, one of their fourth round picks. They need to look at this linebacker position for the future. So I do highlight this one in red. While it's not a first round type of need, it is something I'll be looking at. Cornerback, this is not that big of a need. Trey Brown, Michael Jackson competing out for that third spot. And Devin Witherspoon might play more on the outside in McDonald's scheme this season. You got Kobe Bryant as a good slot backup, Artie Burns, et cetera. So in terms of this year, it is, it's looking really good and hopefully reek wolin will play a little bit better this year he's still a good corner but witherspoon wolin brown jackson bryant burns like that's pretty solid safety wise this is something i'll be looking at in the future because everybody but jenkins and reed are free agents after this season so love and wallace both free agents we'll see if wallace i mean wallace could be a guy that competes in in training camp to make the roster with his guarantees being very very low i mean i think he'll make the roster Overall, you got Love, Jenkins, Wallace, and Reed right now. Who's that free safety? Who's that guy that can play over the top, you know, be that dude? That is kind of what they're missing right now. They're going to be more playing more split safety under McDonald this season. So I'm not as worried about finding that true rangy free safety. But they definitely are missing that piece in this room that can be kind of like the ball hawking dude. So I'll be looking for that in the draft. Not a high, high priority, but it is something I'm looking at, especially with Love and Wallace being free agents next season. Let's go on, though, to the draft. It is that time where I'm taking Troy Fatanu. Yeah, it's the cop-out. You got a lot of Washington coaches coming over here, but I think Fatanu fits exactly what they need on this offensive line. He also gives you swing tackle capability if you need it, right? If Cross gets injured, well, you put Fatanu over there at left tackle. Really like his hands, man. He's so aggressive with his hands. He's got great lateral agility. And just somebody that, you know, if you put inside, he's going to be better, not oversetting as much, because sometimes he did lose a lot to inside counter moves. Overall, putting him at left guard, I feel really confident he's going to be a day one impact and really help you out in a more pass-heavy centric offense Ryan Grubb is going to want. And then we go on to Trayvon Wallace here, Kentucky linebacker, the Wildcat. He is a Wildcat, man. He is a... He's a, he's a lot of upside, right? He reminds me a lot of like a Trenton Simpson type of prospect. Somebody you take in, it's a very similar role. And hey, Baltimore Ravens took him last year in like eight pick 87, somewhere in that territory. So I think Trayvon Wallace goes in the same range. He's an elite athlete. He looked great in the senior bowl, made big time plays at a couple of big goal line stops. He just flashed for me when watching the senior bowl and the actual game itself. Overall, Wallace, a lot of upside if you can develop him. Still very raw in, in his overall Hughes understanding of coverage assignments, stuff like that. But you give him a year to develop behind Dotson and Baker, and he can be the starter in a year. Let's go on to Kalen Bullock from USC. Another guy that can be that, 
you know, ball hawk. That's the, they're missing in this room, and that's something that I'm looking for. Kalen Bullock can be that guy. Now, he's a little bit on the lighter side, but he can play more of that deep player in this room, and you can allow Jenkins, you can allow Wallace, and even Julian Love to play more in the strong suits. And they're, like I talked about, they're going to play more two high coverages, so you can kind of rotate these guys in and out. Jenkins would be more of that box guy, hybrid, you know, cover tight ends and stuff like that, and Bullock, and then Love could play deep, or, you know, depending early on, it could be Wallace and, and Love, and then long term, it'd be Bullock and Love, or something like that, depending on if they re-sign him. But nonetheless, Kylan Bullock, with his range, his ball instincts, I think that's exactly what they need. Then we go on to Zach's Enter Michigan, the Wolverine, going to be that right guard to develop, be another piece to compete with Anthony Bradford, solidify that interior. Now we got Fatanu, you got Zenter, you got Bradford, you got Harris, you got Olawatimi. Like that to me is something we can figure out starters. Okay, you got five, six capable guys on there, if I can count correctly, but something like that. You got five guys that we feel confident, not the restaurant, but we feel really confident about we can we can work with. Then we go into Michigan. I know you're like why would you pick Michigan players? I know, I'm sorry, but no love lost. I think Jalen Harrell, another nice Michigan Wolverine prospect with some upside that you can develop off the edge, fits McDonald's scheme, and uh, you know, with his athletic traits, you can mold him as that fifth edge rusher behind Daryl Taylor, and maybe if you don't re-sign Daryl Taylor, then he can fill that mold. Next pick, I'm going with Logan Lee out of Iowa. Somebody they think will fit the 3-4 defense, put him up at 5-tech, and can be a good rotational player, right? He's not going to be probably an impact right away, but I think he can be a 100 to 300 snap guy down the line as that early down player. Just rotation. Keep your, your guys fresh, in other words. He's strong at the point of attack and just a hard worker, right? He's one of those guys that just kind of goes until the whistle, you know, goes after the whistle goes. And I think he can be a really nice run defender, help them out in that department too. And then on to our final pick of the draft, Keaton Slovis from BYU you know, shuffled around from USC, obviously. Keaton Slovis, well, you know, obviously it's a late round pick. It's a door throw. That's what it is. It's the end of the draft. We're taking a chance on a guy. I mean, he's an accurate quarterback. He kind of understands the timing and, you know, uh, you know, he's an experienced guy. So I think at the end of the draft, why not take a chance, at least compete for a third quarterback spot to fill out the depth in the room. Obviously, you've got to take care of you know, the ball better and, and, and not throw as many kind of baffling passes. Overall, somebody take at the end of the draft that you never know, right? And, and who knows? I'm not saying he's Brock Purdy, but at the end of the day, we're going to fill out this quarterback room with the right depth. So let's go ahead and recap everything up after the draft. And my number one priority was this offensive line. And hopefully, we've been able to address that in a good situation here. Troy Vitanu day one impact, day one starter. You got Zach Center who will compete with Anthony Bradford for that right guard position. Same thing at center here, Nick Harris, Olusaguno, Luatimi. I feel confident you're going to find a good starter between that center, that right guard position. And now you have good depth as well. And you have depth at the tackle position. Whether Abraham Lucas starts, whether George Fan starts, you're going to have a nice backup behind them, etc. on whoever starts. So I feel good about this offensive line now. This can be a solid top 15 potential offensive line line and then with some development who knows I get talked about I think Charles Cross can take that next step be towards more of an elite tier tackle this year wide receiver we didn't do anything same thing with tight end you know that could be a pick we throw at maybe in the mid portion late portion of the draft so that's you know maybe one knock on this I, I just spend a pick on Keaton Slovis instead so maybe that's not a priority overall just trying to fill out that quarterback depth wide running back we didn't do anything that could be a UDFA pickup defensively wise defensive line we added up pieces with Logan Willie and Jalen Harrell more fifth guys in their rotations not going to be probably day one impacts for the team but that's okay I feel like they've got their day one impacts they've got their rotation of four edge rushers they've got their rotation of four to five interior defensive linemen linebacker and safety was more of my priority here with Trayvon Wallace being that third linebacker right away long-term starter for them, developmental piece behind Dotson and Baker, and then finally, Kalen Bullock as that free safety for the future behind Love, uh, Jenkins, and Wallace early on in their in his career. So that's going to do it here for the Seattle Seahawks team, the 12th man. Let me know what you think, agree or disagree. Hope you guys have a really cool day. I'll talk to you later.